Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Lesson 15, structure in graphs of polynomial functions. All righty, classwork opening exercise. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x squared. Okay, so let's do that. And that's easy to graph without a table. You just substitute in zero. What is zero squared? It's zero. So it's going to come down and touch the origin. And I did change to red, but it decided to stay black. All right, and then one squared is one, which would be right here. Negative one squared is positive one. Now go there. Two squared is four. Negative two squared is four. Three squared is nine. Negative three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Negative four squared is 16. So here's what the graph would look like. Okay. Getting out of control there a little bit, but you get the idea. There it is. And I like to label my graph f of x equals x squared. Okay, then it says, what will the graph of g of x equals x to the fourth look like? Sketch it on the same coordinate plane. Well, think of x squared as, or x to the fourth as x squared squared. And so we're going to square the answers we got or the y values we got from our first function again. So it's going to get bigger faster. So it's going to start at the same point, the origin. Zero to the fourth power is zero. One to the fourth power is one. Okay, but two to the fourth power is two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. So we're already up to 16 at two and negative two. So this thing got large really fast. So we're coming down like so, coming around and going up. Oops, let's try that again. Let's come down, curve, and then turn and go back up. Okay, it's really tough for me to do this with this pad, but there you have it. Um, and if you were thinking of fractions, fractions would get bigger, slower, so it's going to curve outside here. So I'm gonna show you what these look like in GeoGebra because it's a better um, representation than my drawing. And then it says, what will the graph of H of x equals x to the sixth look like. Well, that'd be x to the fourth squared. So it'd get fast, bigger, even faster. So if I go to the website GeoGebra and I input x squared, okay? So there is x squared like I graphed on the last page. So one squared, two squared is four, four squared is 16. But then if I graph x to the fourth, As you can see, it gets bigger faster. But as I was saying, if we zoom in between zero and negative one, x to the fourth gets bigger slower because fractions take longer to get back up to one here. So it flattens out between one and zero more so than the parabola x squared. So then it says, what would x to the sixth look like? So then I put x to the sixth in. And that's the red line. And as you can see, it takes longer to get to one. It's, it's slower to increase at first, and then it starts to get bigger faster really quick. And so there's the graph of x to the sixth in red. So here's x squared green, x to the fourth in blue, x to the sixth in red, okay? Example one. Sketch the graph of f of x equals x cubed. And then what will the graph of g of x equals x to the fifth look like? So let me bring my table down, my graph. 
Okay, so x cubed, here we go. So zero cubed is zero. One cubed is one. Two cubed is eight. Three times three is nine times three is 27. So this is getting big really fast like so. But then it's going to curve and go down to negative one and then negative this way. So I didn't bring my table down far enough, but negative one to the third power is negative one. Negative two to the third power is negative eight. So it's going to reflect across the origin. Okay, x to the fifth, well, that would get bigger faster like we saw before and h to the seventh would get even bigger. So instead of trying to graph it here, I'm gonna go back to GeoGebra and graph x cubed, x to the fifth and x to the seventh in the graphing calculator. So let me just get a, um, clear all, don't save. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to input x to the third. So here's x cubed, so let's take a look at that again. Zero to the third power, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, negative one cubed is negative one, and negative two cubed is negative eight. So there's that graph that I just graphed on mine. So then it says to graph x to the fifth. So x to the fifth. So as you can see, if we zoom in closer, again, it's taking longer to get large, but then it gets bigger faster. So it cuts through the original function and then it gets steeper quicker. Okay, and then what would x to the seventh look like? Okay, well, x to the seventh is this gray line right here. And it took longer to get larger, but if we zoom in really far, really close, I should say, this is not zero here, it's approaching zero. Even right here, none of the functions are equal to zero. They're a little teeny bit above. So I could zoom in, as you can see, into tenths. And if I kept zooming in, we are not on that line. So we're getting into hundreds. See how it's up off the line? So don't think that that is zero until we get out to here. It is zero here and even right here, we're not on the x-axis, it's greater than. And over here, we're just a little less than. Small, small decimal values. But then as the functions go out to larger x values, the y's get larger way faster. And every one of them is equal at the same time at one and negative one. But then they, they cross over and then the power of five and the power of seven get bigger faster. Okay, page two brings us to exercise one, but before we do this, I'd like to explain end behavior is what it's called. All right, so if you look here, it actually says end behavior. All right, so what is end behavior? Well, keep in mind that functions go to infinity, okay? So if there's no restrictions on the domain. All right, so the domain is X and the range is Y and Y equals F of X, okay? So when this says F of X goes to infinity and X goes to infinity, what they're saying is, is here's how you would do it. Here's how I explain it to my students. If I have a stick figure and he is walking this way, okay? As he is going to the right, in other words, as X goes to infinity, does he have to look up or does he have to look down to see where that function is going? So when he is right here, whoops, that's end behavior. Does he have to look up? And obviously he does. So you would say, as X goes to infinity, as the dude's walking to the right, he has to look up. So the function is going to infinity, okay? And then it works the same going the other direction. So if I take this guy and he's walking along, do 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 and he's walking this way, as he approaches negative infinity, as he's going to the left, 
does he have to look up or does he look down? And obviously he's got to look down here. So you'd say as the guy is going to the left and left is negative infinity, the function is going to negative infinity. So that's kind of how I explain it to the students. You're on the graph. As you go to the right, is the function going up or down? As you go to the left, is the function going up or down? Up is positive infinity, down is negative infinity. Right's positive infinity, left's negative infinity. And that's all there is to end behavior. Okay, so got that all out of the way. So now let's focus on these problems on this page. So it says, consider the following function, 2x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus 5x plus 3. With a mixture of odd and even degree terms, predict whether its end behavior will be like a fun the function in the opening exercise or more like the functions from example one. Graph the function f using a graphing utility to check your prediction. Okay, so it doesn't matter what any of this is. So in all actuality, okay, I could take my pen and make it really thick and cross, oops, that was really big. Okay, cross out everything except the first term. Okay, so I'm just going to focus on 2x to the fourth. A fourth degree polynomial has three turns. So we really care about its endpoint. So if a is positive, which this is, a equals positive two, that means the function is going up like this. So this is what it would look like if I graphed it. Okay, so if I take my guy here, as x goes to positive infinity, he's got to look up. As he goes to negative infinity, he's got to look up. So what you would say is, as x goes to infinity, comma, f of x, the function, is also going to infinity, being positive. I don't write the plus when it's positive. Okay, and if I'm now I'm walking to the left, I'd say as x goes to negative infinity, comma, what is f of x doing? f of x is going to positive infinity as well. So I want you to understand that when you're answering these questions, this portion is always the same. You're always going to say as I go to the right or as I go to the left, and then you're going to say what the function is doing. So it's all the same. Actually, it's all the same all the way out to here. And the only difference is the sign of the infinity. Okay. So then it says, predict whether its end behavior will be like functions in the opening exercise or more like functions from example one. Well, the opening exercise went up, up, up. And example one, one went up, one went down. So I would say it would be like the opening exercise, not example one. Then it says graph the function using a graphing utility and check your prediction. So I open up my graphing calculator and I go to y equals, and I am gonna enter this whole thing now. Okay, I was just doing that to prove a point. But if I go here and I clear these and I put two, x to the power of four minus x cubed minus x squared plus five x plus three and graph it. Okay, I've got to change my window. The last thing I graphed was over here. So I should have hit zoom six. I should always do that first. And there's the function. So if I zoom out or zoom to fit, let's try zoom fit, zoom zero. It's coming down, touching the X axis, turning, going back up. Okay. So the key to this is it is, oops, it is going up on both ends f of x goes to infinity. So as x goes to the right, f of x goes up. As x goes to negative infinity or left, x goes up or to positive infinity. Okay. B, consider the following function. 
two X to the fifth minus X to the fourth, blah, 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 with a mixture of odd and even degree terms, predict whether it's end behavior will be like the opening exercise or more like example one. Well, the first term is two X to the fifth, where A is positive two. So a function of degree odd does this. Okay, that'd be a cubic. And this could do this. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. That's what that five tells us. Since A is positive, it goes this way. If A was negative, it would go this direction. Okay, so we know it's not this because A is positive two. So this is the, what our function should look something like, depend, depending on what these numbers do to it. Doesn't matter. What are we trying to figure out? It's end behavior. We don't care what's happening at this point in between the ends, <clears throat> okay? So picture this, and let me just draw a, an axis like so, all right? Our y-intercept is the only thing I know right here, which is three. So let's say that crosses at three. This could be totally wrong. This could be over further. So in other words, this could be here. It could be, it could be, let me see, up like this. It could be down like this, where there's only one root that crosses the x-axis, one x, or the, we could have five, okay? Anyway, it could be anything like that. All we're focusing on here is end behavior. So then if I take my little guy, where did he go? Right here. Let's bring him down here. All right. So as he's going to the right, which way is he got to look? So you'd say as X approaches, I should put a space there. It looks like ASX. As X goes to positive infinity, I'll use the plus sign this time, comma, the function is going to, and he has to look up, so it's positive infinity. Then I'd say as x goes to negative infinity, comma, what is the function doing? So then you have to picture this guy walking this direction. Why does that keep exploding? So he's walking this direction, which way does he have to look to see the function when he's going this way forever? Well, he's got to look down. It's, it's going below. So that is negative infinity. C, think back to our discussion of x-intercepts and graphs. Oh, by the way, it says graph you, the function f using a graphing utility. So I probably should do that. All right. So I go to y equals clear it. 2x to the fifth minus x to the, whoops, I didn't come out of my power, 2x to the fifth arrow right, minus x to the fourth arrow right, minus 2x math three for cubed, plus 4x squared, plus x plus three. Zoom six. Okay, so there we go. Now, if I zoom zero to see what it would look like fitting better, zoom zero, let's take a look. Okay, here it is coming up, gets to the x axis, kind of seems to disappear, and then it goes back up again. So, again, we don't care what's going on in between. But what we do care about is the ends. So as we go to the right, it's going up. As we go to the left, it is going down. So this is right, up, left, down. OK? C says, thinking back to our discussion of x-intercepts of graphs of polynomial functions from the previous lesson, sketch a graph of an even degree polynomial function that has no x-intercepts. OK? OK, so here would be my y-axis. Struggles are real sometimes, folks. Okay. Here is my x-axis. So I'm going to label those x, y. I want an even degree polynomial that has no x-intercepts. Well, x squared is even, so let's just make keep it simple. Here's a polynomial or a quadratic, and it 
came down, minimum is here, turned and went back up, never crossing the x-axis, okay? Another one could be coming down, going up, coming down, going up, never crossing the x-axis, okay? It does not have to be positive, it could be negative. I could have a negative x squared function with a y-intercept of negative three or something like that, so it would look like this. Okay, so there's three examples of even functions that do not cross the x-axis, therefore have no x-intercepts. D says, similarly, can you sketch a graph of an odd degree polynom polynomial function with no x-intercepts? Well, if we have an x-axis and a y-axis, here's x, here's y, Third degree polynomial goes up, then down, then up. So if we just use the parent function x cubed, it's going to do this, okay? And it goes up forever, it goes down forever when you go to the left. I don't know what that is, get rid of it. So what this is saying is, can I graph an odd degree polynomial function that has no x-intercepts? Well, no matter where I move this thing, it has to cross the x-axis because those arrows mean it goes down. This arrow means it goes down forever. And this arrow means it goes up forever. So if I wanted to be really technical about this, I could draw this. Okay, here's my function. And then I grab it and move it around. It's always going to cross the x-axis no matter where I have it. It could be over here, it could be over here, but it is always going to cross the x-axis. Okay, so odd degree polynomials have to have at least one x-intercept. Okay, page three brings us to exercise two, and it says the Center for Transportation Analysis, CTA, studies all aspects of transportation in the United States from energy and environmental concerns to safety and security challenges. A 1997 study compiled the following data of the fuel economy in miles per gallon of a car or light truck at various speeds measured in miles per hour. The data are compiled in the table below. Okay, so fuel economy by speed, speed, fuel economy, miles per gallon. And the source came from the transportation energy data book. And there it is. A, plot the data using a graphing utility. Okay, I'm going to use GeoGebra simply because it's easier to pan around and to put it in a graphing calculator like a TI. And um, it says which variable is the independent variable. Well, the independent variable is X. And you have to ask yourself, is fuel economy dependent on how fast you're going? Or is how much fuel economy you get dependent or how much fuel economy you get affects the speed you go. So is speed dependent on fuel economy? That doesn't make any sense. Fuel economy is, is dependent on speed. So since fuel economy is dependent, speed would be independent. Okay, so speed is my X, fuel economy is my Y. So let's plot this data and let's see. Here we go. Let's get this ready here. Okay, so I'm going to go to GeoGebra. Here it is. So it's geogebra.org calculator. And for input, you just simply click over here and then you use your parentheses. And the first point was 15 comma 24.4. And then I hit return. Okay, I don't see it, why? Well, X is 15, that's over here, 24.4. Okay, so I need to zoom out, there it is. So 15, 24.4 is right there, okay? So that's why I wanted to use this instead of the TI. Uh, then 20, 27.9, so it'd be parentheses 20, comma, 27.9, return. So there's B. And then the next one is 25, 30.5. Okay. And I don't see it. There it is. 
Okay. All right. So then we're going to do a 30, 31, 7. Thirty, comma, thirty-one point seven. So thirty uh, miles per hour will give us thirty-one point seven miles per gallon. And there it is. So it looked like it was linear at first, but now it seems to be turning. So maybe a quadratic. Okay. So that was D. So E would be after thirty, thirty-five, thirty-one point two. So if you go 35 miles an hour, you'll get 31.2 miles per gallon. So it is, it's starting to turn down. Okay, so then the next one is 40, 31. So 40 miles per hour, 31 miles per gallon. Okay, and there it is. So it kind of leveled off a little bit there. It only came down by two tenths of a mile per gallon. Okay, and then the next one is 45, 31.6. Okay, let's try parentheses first. 45 comma 31.6, enter. And there it is. So now it's starting to curve and go back up. Hmm, interesting. All right, at 50, you get 32.4. 50 miles an hour, 32.4 miles per gallon. At 60, no, 55. We're going in five mile per hour increments. Now we're at 55 miles an hour and we're gonna get 32.4 miles per gallon. So that was the same as H. So now it kind of flattened out, okay? And then 60, 31.4, 60 comma 31.4, return. So now it's going down again. Oh, look at this almost looks like a fourth degree polynomial now with um, a negative A. Okay, so now we're going to get to K, which is 65.29.2. Return, there's K. After 65 miles per hour, we're going 70, and at 70 miles per hour, we're gonna get 26. 0.8 miles per gallon. Okay, and that's off the grid. There it is. Okay, and then finally, the last one, I'm going, now we're going to go 75 miles per hour, and we're only going to get 24.8 miles per gallon. Okay, so I'll zoom out a little bit so I can show you what happened there. So there's the graph of those values of speed and miles per gallon. Okay, so at first, the faster you were going, the worse the econ fuel economy was, and then it turned, okay. Actually, it was getting better. 15 miles an hour, almost 24. You go a little faster, you're getting better mileage, okay. And then there was a point where it tapered and then it increased again and then it started to decrease as you went faster and faster you're using more fuel. Okay, so there's the graph. So now what does it want us to do? So we plotted it. B, this data can be modeled by a polynomial function. Determine if the function that models this data would have an even or odd degree. Okay, so now going back to that graph, remember an odd degree goes up from left to right. So the end behavior, one would be down, one would be up. In this case, this end behavior, as I'm going to negative infinity, this is going down to negative infinity. As I'm going to the right to positive infinity, this is going down to negative infinity. So it, this kind of looks like this, okay? So when you have a function that looks like that and they're both pointing down, then the data would have an even degree. Is the leading coefficient of the polynomial that can be used to model this data positive or negative? And that would be our A, and A would be a negative. 
because our end behavior are both going in the downward direction. D says, list two possible reasons the data might have the shape that it does. Okay. Okay, so here's one possible reason. You could say fuel economy improves up to a certain speed, but then wind resistance at higher speeds reduces fuel economy. The increased gas needed to go higher speeds reduces the fuel economy. Okay. Okay, page four just has some relevant vocabulary. So I'm not going to go over this. Review this relevant vocabulary on your own. Okay, page five brings us to the end of lesson 15. So go back, review that relevant vocabulary, super important, and go do your problem set.